Hello everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you some important techniques and give you tips and tricks about manhwa style or Korean webtoon style artwork. So, without wasting any time, let's discuss. First of all, we need to take the base references. In this case, I wanted to draw this anime guy named Marshall. I hope I'm not butchering the name. As I accidentally came across a short and this dude just started dancing. I was like, okay, interesting. So anyways, this reference is obviously drawn in a different style. And I also used human reference as well. Then of course, we need the reference of the art style that we are trying to copy here. So I went to Pinterest and searched Manva guys. And there were plenty of pictures. I looked for the one with black hair and interesting lighting. And if you notice these pictures, you can see all of them have long chin. Their jawlines are very sharp and they have very pointy kind of long chin. Probably to make them look sharp and hot. So this is one of the prominent features that we need to remember while drawing it, especially if you are trying to paint a guy. The next thing is the lips are pretty long and so is the nose length. You also have to keep in mind that the lips are not just a single line all the time. There are also art styles where you can see the upper and lower lips, just like these ones. So you can go for the one liner lips or you can go for a bit more detailed one. And as you can see, I went for the detailed version. This is the reference that I followed the most because of its good light and shadow. Now let me talk about the shape of the eyes. The most common shape is parallelogram. And this parallelogram has different line weight. The end part of the eyes is going to be thicker all the time and also the very corner of the eyes. And there is also this kind of elevated almond shaped eyes with thick ends as if it's a winged eyeliner. All of these cases the eyes are pretty long that you also have to remember. Now there's another style. If we look at this reference, we can see the eyelashes are mingling with the skin. As if the skin is going into the eyelash and also the parts of the eyes are going outwards in the skin. To make this effect, all we need to do is take a mixer brush with all the parameters maxed out and pull the colors outside for the bottom eyelashes and inside for the top eyelashes. I did not like this style for this specific artwork, but it can look really nice if done correctly. And lastly, I have noticed this particular style in lot of artworks that the bottom of the eyes have lots of rough lines or thick lines as if they have eye bags or something. I don't know why, maybe to give the character some edge. But I keep seeing this effect, so if you want to try that, you can go for it. Okay, now that we finished breaking down the styles of the eye, it's time to talk about how to sketch. There is nothing much specific about sketching, but of course we need to add line width to make it look interesting. So if you notice this artwork, you can see some of the parts are thicker and then these other parts are thinner. This variety of line width makes the art look interesting. Notice the areas that I have add more line width are the joints and the curves. So if you are confused about where to add line width, you can also try this. You can also do the alternate area thick and thin, just like this square. Now let me show you a different square without any line width and you can tell which one looks more interesting. To make this variety of lines, you have to choose brushes that helps you with creating line without much effort. So I have used stylish brush with pen pressure. But if you do not have a stylus, you can still do it 
just draw a normal square then add some overlapping line on the specific areas that you want to make thicker. It is tricky and probably you would need to erase out sometimes but it works. But I have to admit that having a stylus makes things super easy especially for the line work. Now for the inner lines you can decrease the thickness and opacity of the brush so it gives a lighter appearance. And in this case you don't really have to worry about the line weight because those are fine lines which are not so noticeable. And lastly for the lip area the two sides are going to be thicker. And the middle part may or may not have any line. Let me show you how different kind of lips you can draw and it's not really difficult. You just need to keep the sides thicker and you may or may not add a small line below it. Now that we have discussed all the basics, let me give you a quick demonstration of a face based on all the things I explained just now. Then you will understand how easy it is actually. If you can break down a style, it's not really too difficult to draw. And oh by the way, you don't really have to worry about drawing the ears because you can keep it as simple as possible. It can be a mix of realistic and semi-realistic style. Just a few lines to show that it's an ear. And now that we have a face, let me quickly use the liquify pens to give it a proper shape. And just like that, we have a very generic manhwa style face that is ready for use. Now, it's time to show you the colors that I use to paint the skin. This is how it looks like without any light effect. Let me color drop quickly and show you how the colors look like. You can see the mid-tone does not have a lot of saturation and so does the highlight. It's actually even less saturated. On the other hand, the shadows are a bit more saturated there. So the thing I'm trying to say is, I would suggest you to start with less saturation and then gradually add it if needed. You might think that the less saturated part is not looking good, it's looking muddy, but trust me, with the highlights and the shadows, it's going to look better. And then there are other things that need to be discussed to make things look even better. So first of all, if you notice the border in between the dark and light areas, there is a slightly more saturated color going on. And that effect is called subsurface scattering. So what is that and why does that happen? It happens because our skin is kind of translucent. So when the light hits, the blood vessel underneath our skin makes it look saturated and gives it a reddish or orangish look. So adding that effect makes your art look better. You should apply this method in every art, especially if you are trying to draw sunlight hitting the skin. Let me quickly demonstrate. In this case, let's say the light is coming from the right side. So I'm going to add the saturated orange in the intermediate zone. You don't have to blend it completely. Also, some of the scattered lies goes into the darker area. It's a simple thing, but when you add it, it makes your art look so much better. To make this effect more prominent, I added overlay layer on top of the skin layer and added the saturated orange color. Now it's time to talk about the second point. You can see there's another light going on in the left side. There's no light source but you can see some soft highlights going on there which is the reflected light. It's not coming from the direct source but it's bouncing back from the area surrounding him. It's even more important than subsurface scattering so you have to remember it. 
do not forget to add this to your painting when you are doing interesting light and shadow in your next art. There is something extra I did which is adding blush on his cheeks. This is not mandatory but I have seen some of the artworks had this kind of blush going on but I guess that's their personal choice. In this art I could have skipped it but I just wanted to see how it looked like. Next we are coming to another important point that is hair. I know many people struggle with painting this kind of stylized hair but there is a very easy trick that I found by accident. So now I'm going to give this trick to you and you will never struggle to make your hair look better. So listen carefully. As you can see I have two layers of color dodge and add above the main hair layer which I'm going to talk about later. Let's first do the basic light and shadow. So I'm going to delete what I have right now and show you for the demonstration purpose. First take a lighter color than the base hair color and draw random strands using lasso feel tool. If you want, you can keep it as it is without doing the next step, but I would suggest you to do the next step to make it look even better. So when you are done with adding the strands, go to the effects menu and then moving blur from the blur button. Then you have to change the direction and strength to match the direction of the highlighted hair. And that's it. With such a little time, you have just created an illusion of nicely highlighted hair. Isn't that cool? If the angle is not perfect, you can fix that by using liquify pens. And do the same thing using the color dodge and the add layer. In this case, for the add layer, I wanted to have some more sharpness. So I chose Unsharp Mask, which makes it look really crisp against the soft hair strands. So now you have the secret to draw really pretty hair within like 5 minutes. Finally, we are going to go to the last point, which is Highlight. And for that, I used this reference to replicate that strong light reflection. To do this, you can take any brush with a sharp or medium sharp edge and then move it along the side of the hair. Next, you have to go to Effects and turn on Outer Glow. You can change the radius to your liking and that's it. You have a sharp highlight with a softer glow around it. If you feel like the edges are way too harsh, then you can soften it using the blurring brush. And that's it. That's all you need to know about painting Manva styled portrait. I hope these techniques and inputs will help you with your process and even if you are trying to achieve something else, I believe some of these techniques will definitely help you. That's it for today's video. Let me know your feedbacks in the comments section and I will see you in the next one. Till then, take care.